Steve up next doing soda and tennis. And then I will be right after him doing soda and tennis. There you go. All right. So I should, I should preface my, my um, presentation with the fact you're not, you're not going to see any Smith's charts. My <laughs> uh, trigonometry, um, Maxwell trigonometry equations, because in fifth grade, I was busy drawing pictures in my notebook when I should have been paying attention to the algebra teacher, and all that stuff just went over my windshield. Because I, I wound up being an art major. Yeah, um, it's funny. Ham radio has been a passion of mine since I was 11, 12 years old. And I'm pushing 80 right now, and um, I'm still passionate about it having fun, but close, or I forget what it was, somebody said at the beginning um, of the presentation, um, close enough is good enough, <laughs> and that's, that's been my principle. But I'm going to talk about my two favorite antennas for What's your name? Steve, and the call is WG0AT. You right now, it looks like Tell me a goat. <laughs> That's because I hike with goats. <laughs> anyway, my two favorite antennas are the random wire, or it's also known as an N fed random wire. And both of these antennas are N fed. Um, the other one is a half wave N fed antenna. So my go to radio for uh, some. Su Summits on the air is a KX2 because it's um, basically a shack in a box. I mean, it's got a battery, it's got an antenna tuner, a wide range antenna tuner that allows me to operate between um, 6 to 10 meters. It does 80 meters, but 80 meter antenna on a summit is. Um, a big antenna, and there's there's just not a lot of activity, uh, sort of activity on on 80 meters, and so I concentrate on um, sometimes 60, but mostly 40 through the higher bands. Um, the antenna, it's an antenna random wire, which isn't so random as we found out. Um, it deploys easy and it's fast to throw up and either throw it over a tree or uh, set up a mast and lay the mast against the tree. There's no coax. Coax weighs anywhere from two to three pounds depending upon how much and what size it is and, and um, when you're wearing your boot leather off and grinding up to a summit, uh, you're concerned about how much weight you have in your pack once you have it going. Um, and using a 9 to 1 gallon with an infant random wire is ideal in that, um, like I said, it'll allow me with one, one piece of wire to tune um, 60 through 10 meters. This high. <clears throat> so, um, the CAX 2 has a, a wide range antenna tuner in it. It'll tune um, a 10 to 1 SWR down to a 1 to 1. And couple that with a 9 to 1 means that um, I can tune any one of these lengths of wire in, in green at the bottom of that uh, block up there. And um, matter of fact, that, that, that list of lengths goes on further all the way up to four or five hundred feet, but that's pretty impractical for a mountaintop summit, obviously. Um, next slide. So a, ten, a nine to one uh, tuner, there's all kinds of schematics on the internet. They're, these aren't hard to build. I use computer ribbon cable uh, when I built mine so I could keep track of which wire was which um, as far as trying to match the, the diagram. 
I'm, I'm good at following diagrams, but I can't tell you how the rabbits run around the circuit. <laughs> In other words, I, I can follow a recipe and, and bake a cake, and that's what I'm doing with ham radio. Next slide, please. <laughs> or you can buy a kit. Um, our friend uh, Adam, K6ARK, has on Amazon these kits, and you can do a 49 to 1, uh, a 9 to 1, or a 1 to 1 ballot. Um, but a handful of parts. Next slide. So, with a handful of parts, he also has a video online. It's about a half hour video that he goes through, and it actually shows you how to put the parts together. And the end result is this little BNC connector with some shrink wrap on the end and a wire, and that's where you attach a random, random wire to. Um, let me um, preface this with, this is a, a QRP ballot, but he does have some QRO ballots that are good up to 100, 100 watts thereabouts. So, one of my passions is building, and I built a, a, an arsenal of these little QRP radios. Uh, I've got one here. You can start passing it around. I mean, yes. this, is a, <laughs> this is pretty nice, a little sweet deal. Yeah, and the, the, it's got a built in panel because uh, it's a CW radio. It doesn't do voice. I'm about ready to lose mine. Um, <laughs> so I, because of the fact I've got all these QRP radios that I've built over the years, I like to take different radios and use, based on conditions, um, use a different radio on a different mountaintop. I've done, uh, today, about 620 act summit activations. Um, a lot of them, actually 200 plus, uh, are more Mount Hermel. And that's just because it's 15 minutes from my back door to the trailhead and maybe 45 minutes to the top and I'm on the air. And it's it's a great summit. Um, so can you back up one slide, please. So infant half wave is my other favorite antenna because with a 49 to 1 balance, I can I can use any one of these little QRP radios that do not have a built-in antenna to them. And using the, the, the little balloon, um, I can tune an infant half wave antenna to 50 ohms, which the radio likes to have. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so, this is a 49 to 1 balloon. Um, it's, it's making that high impedance at the end of the half wave. In other words, if you fit in the middle, you'd have 50 ohms. But because out at the end of the wire, it's high voltage and it's also high impedance. And that transformer transforms that impedance down to something that the radio will be happy with. Next slide, please. Um, the, 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 and the 49 to 1 is simple to build. I mean, if you can follow the schematic, there's a ton of schematics out there on the internet. And I go one and put it in a, um, a dental floss container, uh, a little uh, SD card container, also a, a, uh, um, a contact lens container to, to keep the moisture out of it. Next slide, please. And again, our friend K6ARK Adam um, has the same the same kit that can be configured for a 49 to 1. So next slide. But then, because oftentimes I'm sitting in a snowbank with snow sh my snowshoes on um, to get up and change the length of the wire or change uh, the lengths. I went to building, uh, I got involved in building a trap. The advantage of a trap is I can sit in that snowbank 
and switch bands, and I don't have to get up, tromp over, and take down the antenna and switch a switch or uh, change a link to change bands. So um, the advantage is I can now feed in 20 meter energy, and it's going to stop at the 20 meter track and see that as a half wave. Or if I feed, feed in 30 meter um, RF, the same thing. It's in this RF is going to be blocked at that um, track point. Next slide, please. Again, our friend Adam goes through and describes building a, uh, a trap if, if you're interested in it. Um, these are, again, QRP traps. They're not designed for high power, but the principle is the same. Next slide. Um, and PC boards are available. Um, I think it's in Ocean Park. Um, you, these PC boards are, I think, about 75 cents a piece. Um, half of what the postage costs to, to get it to you. But um, the advantage is that all you have to do is just get the right component in the right, right place. Um, there are SMD parts, so if you drop it on the rug, it disappears. But Adam, he's real good about not like letting you fail at making these things. And um, I dropped the line and said, hey, I lost my SMD capacitor. He sent me one. Next slide, please. So this is the, the website for getting the trap uh, PC boards. Next slide. And another um, valuable tool was having a, a little mini SWR bridge. Um, in, This is my my auto tuner, so to speak. Actually, it's a manual tuner um, that tunes my uh, in-fit half-wave uh, antenna. It allows me to, to um, actually the in-fit the 49 to 1 in-fit um, transformer is a fixed transformer, but and. I highly recommend, um, if you're going to design one or use one, just for portable use, to set it up in your backyard, configure it like you're going to configure it in the field, and adjust it for minimum SWR at the given frequency. Um, and I found that to, to work quite well. Even, even on a mountaintop where I've got different soil conditions and uh, trees and other things that influence uh, the performance of the antenna. Um, but having a, a variable, uh, in other words, a capacitor in place of the fixed capacitor, uh, allows you to, to tweak the SWR down to almost nothing. Next slide. Um, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, um, these presentations, Rob is recording, and they'll, they'll be online. You can, um, you know, look at it online and stop the slide and pick it off the, the, um, the website. So, continuing, um, I carry with me because of tree line, I don't have a, a built-in or uh, nature's uh, antenna support and need uh, a fishing pole, telescopic fishing pole to get my antenna up anywhere from 10 to 15, 18, 20 feet, depending upon which fishing pole you're bringing with. Um, some of these are carbon fiber, some are fiberglass, uh, and it turns out that I, my wire is not running down the side of the, the mast. Thus, I'm not worried about the fact that carbon fiber is conductive to some degree. It can influence the, uh, 
your radiation pattern of the antenna. And I've, in the past, I've used winders um, just because they're easy to, um, these are clothes lighting winders in case you're wondering, used for camping, for putting up a clothes line. Um, and also there's one here on the left that's a uh, um, top line winder. But the advantage of it, it's got like a three to one winder. Um, so you can really wind it up fast when that dark cloud is in your direction and you're <laughs> thinking about Mother Nature's about ready to throw, throw sparks at me out of the sky and I want to get out of here fast. So, next slide. Yeah, I've now gone to figure eight um, winding method of the antenna wire, which basically um, is doing a figure eight over your hand back and forth. And once once you start doing it, all of a sudden it becomes um, second nature, and you don't even have to think about over, under, under, over, anyway. This, this is almost as fast as the closed line winder. So, any questions? Good job. Okay.